And we begin the five with breaking news. An L.A. City Councilman under investigation. FBI agents raided the home and offices of Jose Huizar. Agents left with boxes and bags of evidence. Now the question is, what are they looking for and why? CBS 2's Amy Johnson is live at City Hall in downtown L.A. with some clues. Amy. Well, Pat and Jeff, those FBI agents left Jose Weizar's office this afternoon with a lot of boxes, possible evidence, but it's still not clear why those search warrants were served at his office and his home. FBI agents carried multiple boxes and envelopes out of Councilman Jose Weiser's office after spending the day inside collecting possible evidence. We are executing a court order search warrant. The federal agents converged on L.A. City Hall around 9 this morning and made their way to the councilman's office. His staff was reportedly asked to leave all documents and computers behind while they were moved to a conference room. The FBI simultaneously is executing additional warrants in the L.A. area. Agents were also at the councilman's home in Boyle Heights and were seen removing boxes, hard drives and other possible evidence. We have multiple agents here at L.A. City Hall to execute a federal search warrant. Unfortunately, because the warrant is sealed, cannot comment on the nature of the warrant or the target of the warrant. Weizar was recently named in two lawsuits filed by two former employees who accused the councilman of ethic violations, including that his staff was pressured to work during the city time on the campaign of his wife, Rochelle, who is running in the 2020 election to succeed him when his term runs out. Weizar strongly denied the accusations. The councilman has also faced sexual harassment charges, and the city council voted to pay $185,000 to end a lawsuit over a rearing collision he had while driving a city car. Weizar was elected to the 14th district in 2005. Now, the FBI says that they weren't expecting any arrests today. We did reach out to the mayor's office as well as the council president Herb Wesson's office, but they didn't get back to us. Reporting live in downtown LA, Amy Johnson, CBS 2 News. The midterm elections may be over for most, but the drama has a few chapters left, and one of them appears to be on the last page. Republican incumbent Steve Knight has conceded to his Democratic rival Katie Hill. And CBS 2's Randy Page is live outside Hill's campaign office in Santa Clarita with the surprising concession. Randy? Well, Pat, as you can imagine, inside Katie Hill's campaign office, celebrations and flowers. While in Palmdale, Steve Knight told us this. The voters have spoken, and uh, they want a new congressman or a congresswoman for this district. Uh, we wish you the best. After Republican incumbent Congressman Steve Knight broke the news to us that he's conceding the election, Katie Hill's supporters reacted with this. I'm very excited to get there and start working. Hill told us she can't wait to roll up her shirt sleeves and head for Washington on Monday. The commitment and the focus has to be on what can we accomplish right now, what groundwork can we lay for the future, and, um, and what are we going to be able to deliver for our communities. Last night, with the race too close to call, an emotional moment after Katie Hill's parents introduced her to hundreds of volunteers. This 31-year-old political newcomer with a master's degree in public administration says she learned a lot about how to be effective in life by running a nonprofit that helped people in the homeless community. You have to take one step at a time, and each, each person whose lives we touch is a victory. She says she picked the color purple for her campaign to signal her commitment to reaching across the political divide to get things done. I want to play whatever role I can, and I hope that there, are, and I believe that there are enough new members coming from these purple districts who are going to have the same mandate going in. Steve Knight's advice? Well, I would say, you know, you're, you're brand new into politics, you're brand new into policy. Uh, open up your arms, reach out to everyone. It appears she already got the message. We listen, and then we try to find solutions to the problems that pe people are facing at whatever level. And Katie Hill tells me she expects to be named to two committees, Infrastructure and Armed Services. And Pat Jeff, she says that could be good for this district. Infrastructure for jobs and armed services could help with the aerospace industry here. Live in Santa Clarita, Randy Page, CBS 2 News. Back to you.
All right, Randy, thank you. There are some races in Orange County and beyond. They're still too close to call. That's for sure. The nail biting continues for seats in the House of Representatives. In District 48, Democrat Harley Ruda has taken the lead over 15 term incumbent Dana Rohrbacher. The district includes Seal Beach, Costa Mesa, and Laguna Niguel. Also in Orange County, Democratic challenger Katie Porter has been hoping to unseat two term Republican Mimi Walters, but so far, Porter is trailing. And in the 39th Congressional District, Republican Young Kim is leading Democrat Gil Cisneros. The district includes parts of LA, Orange, and San Bernardino counties. CBS2 Orange County reporter Michelle Gili is live at the Registrar's Office in Santa Ana, where ballots are still being counted. Michelle? Oh, yes, they are, Pat. Uh, new numbers are posted every day by the Orange County Registrar of Voters at 5 o'clock. And this is going to continue, I'm told, not for days, but for weeks. It's going to go on past Thanksgiving. Box after box of mail-in and provisional ballots still need to be counted in Orange County. The total is close to 420,000, which means the winners in several races will be unknown for days. And I think that's an important point because I empathize with those candidates and I, I understand that that is, it could be a lot of anxiety waiting for those results to come through. But the important thing is, is that the ballots are counted accurately and correctly in a fair manner. And we don't want to rush through this. One of the most talked about results is the winner of the House seat in the 48th district. Harley Ruda leads longtime Congressman Dana Rohrbacher by a few thousand votes. And there are much tighter contests in some local city council races where candidates are less than 100 votes apart. Nail biters, most definitely. Neil Kelly, the registrar of voters, tells me this signals a growing trend that more and more people are holding on to their mail in ballots until Election Day. Voters turn them in at the polls, and these are the ballots that will be tallied in the coming weeks. And when all of the ballots are counted, we could see a turnout for this election of 65%. And Neil Kelly, the registrar of voters, says he hasn't seen that kind of turnout for a midterm election since the 1970s. That's the latest live here in Santa Ana. I'm Michelle Geely. Back to you. I think everybody agrees that part is good news. All right, Michelle, thanks. They'll be continuing to count ballots as well in L.A. County for days. The registrar's office still has nearly one million ballots to go through. They're still counting provisional ballots, those dropped off at precincts, and mail-in ballots with yesterday's postmark. Those outstanding ballots can make a big difference in some very close races. The 25th Congressional District is one. We have two statewide contests that are very close across the state of California, Superintendent of Public Instruction and Insurance Commissioner um, that, are, that are neck and neck. Uh, um, we have the Sheriff's Contest here in L.A. County. So absolutely, those could be impacted by, the, uh, by the, the votes that remain to be counted here as well as in the other counties. The register there, Dean Logan, says once the uh, tallies are completed, the votes are expected to be certified at the end of the month. Well, we still have more election news ahead, but right now, breaking news from Castaic. Sky 2 over the scene of a fatal crash, car over the side. Stu? Well, that's right, about 400 feet down off of Ridge Route Road, just a couple miles north of Lake Hughes Road out here in Castaic. Now, L.A. County Fire does say, sadly, one person, the driver of that vehicle, has passed away right now. They are tasked with the grim chore of removing that body and bringing it back up. California Highway Patrol out here on the scene as well. They're doing an investigation how this single vehicle went over the side and that one driver died. Live in Sky 2 over Castaic. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you two in the studio. All right. Tragic news there. Thank you, Stu. Now back to politics. Embattled U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is out. The man who was one of the first to endorse his boss for president just turned in his resignation. And CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan is here now with the move. Well, we say no one was surprised, but then well, again, it was a surprise the, the timing, today. You know, the timing <laughs> the may timing. have been a little bit, but you could see it coming from a mile away, right? <laughs> no question. Many predicted it would happen after the midterm elections, and it happened. Jeff Sessions, who left the Senate to join the Trump administration as the nation's top law enforcer, has been fired. Now the $64,000 question, what happens to the Mueller investigation? Can you give us clarity, sir, on your thinking currently, now after the midterms, about your attorney general and your deputy attorney general? Do they have long-term job security? I'd rather answer that 
at a little bit different time. And about an hour after his news conference, the president sent out this tweet. We are pleased to announce that Matthew G. Whitaker, chief of staff to Attorney General Jeff Sessions at the Department of Justice, will be our new acting attorney general of the United States. He will serve our country well. At the Justice Department, applause and handshakes greeted Sessions on his final days in office. He says he delivered his resignation at the request of the president. The two have clashed for more than a year. The president reportedly felt betrayed when Sessions recused himself from overseeing special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. So who's overseeing it now? Not Deputy Attorney Rod Rosenstein, who was at the White House hours after the announcement. I think the, the ownership of the Russian investigation and, and Bob Mueller's appointment would then fall on the new attorney general. And for now, that is Whitaker. Described as a Trump loyalist, many are raising questions about whether this is the man who will fire Mueller. It would create a constitutional crisis if this were a prelude to ending or greatly limiting the Mueller investigation. And I hope President Trump and those he listens to will refrain from that. I could have ended it any time I wanted. I didn't. And there was no collusion. There was no anything. I could fire everybody right now, but you, I don't want to stop it because politically I don't like stopping it. But here's what the new acting attorney general told CNN in 2017. I can see a scenario where Jeff Sessions is replaced uh, with a recess appointment, and that attorney general doesn't fire Bob Mueller, but he just reduces his budget so low that his, his investigation grinds to it at almost a halt. Now, at least one powerful lawmaker is already calling for Whitaker to recuse himself from the Russia probe. California Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, who many believe could become the next House Speaker, tweeted Congress must take immediate action to protect the rule of law and the integrity of the investigation. Pat and Jeff, back to you. And this is just one day after the election. All right, thank you, Dave. Ahead at five, go ahead, grab that cup of coffee. Experts say it could protect your brain. Plus this. The race for sheriff, far from over. I'm Dave Lopez in Whittier, where one of the candidates who not many people thought could pull this off is ahead. You'll hear from him coming up. So you're having breakfast, Ed? Ooh, imagine seeing that. Story <laughs> behind a man without pants who drops right through the ceiling. <laughs> then the Girl Scouts are suing the Boy Scouts. Why the organization that champions young women is taking legal action. Hey, everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. Get ready. We have red flag warnings, high wind warnings, the whole thing is coming up.